the venture of an Ansible, what you're really able to do is not only do task automation, but do operational automation, ops as code. So taking what a system administrator might decide based on events that they're seeing from their observability platforms and decide when to take action, when to do the automation of those tasks that Ansible can traditionally do itself. We saw this happen in your environment. And with that knowledge, we're able to connect that to a remediation or a scaling operation, something of that sort, in order to make your environments simpler to run, increase the speed to remediation, decrease operational overload, and things like that. Big Panda is the only pure play AI ops platform on the market today. It is a AI-driven operations management platform at its core. We standardize and integrate with over 400 enterprise tools today. We're extremely agnostic because that's all we do. We build a smart event, but what we actually do is build a smart incident that could contain hundreds of events, right? Hence the importance of event-driven Ansible because an event can be anything. And you want to respond in kind to one of those events with automation, and it gives that ability to really do that. I think for Ansible customers in particular is we want you to scale to the problem, not to the noise. We compress, we reduce noise of all of the observability tools, ITSM tools, CMDBs, topology information, and we enrich those payloads with runtime variables, really to use a, you know, a, a term that uh, we're all familiar with with Ansible in order to drive uh, operations in a more intelligent fashion, really embracing AI in order to help us optimize and run more efficiently. Having an agnostic approach, much like Ansible has an agnostic approach to automation and its capabilities, I think that's something that both of our customers enjoy the most. No matter what, if they change course, they change vendors, so on and so forth, that their information stays with them and it's openly available. Allowing our customers to really treat their data as a currency in order to make decisions, I think is what's most important. The other thing is one of the pillars of our platform is pragmatism when it comes to AI. If AI is making a suggestion through analytics or you know correlation patterns or root cause when it comes to changes or using generative AI to arrive at a decision, we're gonna let you know why and we're gonna allow you to train it in order to be more accurate. We all know that accuracy and security is key, especially when it comes to even automating. And I think what we can uniquely do with Ansible in the mix is understand what value automation and a smarter incident management process is going to bring and how you can communicate that success. We want to be able to close that loop for you. With a venture of an Ansible, what we're not really trying to be is an event bus or an aggregator of all monitoring events in an environment, all metrics. We don't need to necessarily do any of that uh, analysis. Big Panda is uniquely qualified to do that root cause analysis and give us give us actionable intelligence that you can directly tie to an action, whether that's updating tickets or whether that's actually performing remediation itself. We're able to really take the information coming from Big Panda and uh, tie that directly without needing to do too much of the decision making ourselves, we're able to leverage Big Panda's knowledge about what's going on in the environment to really just close that loop. So we built two native integrations inside of Big Panda, one with Ansible Automation Platform directly and one with event-driven Ansible as an endpoint. We've released both of those integrations and our collections right now contain a bunch of different action modules. I never want your developers to have to crack open our API guide. I want you to be able to write nimble pieces of automation interacting with Big Panda and in turn, because in Big Panda is integrating with all of your observability tools, your ticketing platform, so on and so forth. The great thing is, is that any of the other collections that are, you know, inside of the Ansible library already work out of box with us as well, because we're preserving those payloads, preserving those events, and we're doing those interactions as well. So it's an extension of that collection. But some of the things that we're going to be focused on in the next coming months is building a brand new event bus integration that is an event plugin for EDA, so that when we do send you that 
beautiful, you know, incident or payload from Big Panda that could contain multiple different alerts. We want to be able to allow you to manipulate those payloads in any way and nimble inside of it. Uh, you're capable of doing it today, but let's just make it easier for you, right? So this is going to continue. We're going to continue to develop. And I think Joe and I are very interested to see what you use it for. For Event Driven Ansible, you can go to ansible.com slash event dash driven. There's tons of links there for labs, for development resources, learning materials, and there's also materials on what integrations we have, such as the Big Panda integration. I believe right now on your screen is a QR code. Please join me and Joe very soon here for a longer <laughs> webinar that will go very in depth with how to execute this integration. The whole purpose of this webinar is really to identify four problems and barriers to entry when it comes to getting an event-driven automation a project off the launch pad, right? And four answers. So we're not just gonna be talking about the problem, but actually the solution uh, and how our two platforms work uh, together in order to solve that for you. Thank you.